Shabbat 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 Let's go ahead and just go through some of our slides right now. Welcome to Karim Hashem. I'm Quentin Brooks. Right now, we're just reiterating this verse a lot. It's kind of we're using it to frame our services. That comes from 1 Timothy 4:13. I thought we'd read it together. Until I come, dedicate yourself to the public reading scripture, to encouragement, and to teaching. Welcome to a scripture reading service where there will be encouragement and there will be teaching. Let's go through this prayer. I've never requested bread and received a stone, nor a fish and received a snake. I've asked for a good thing. Please send the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go and bind ourselves to our Master, Yeshua the Messiah. The reading of the share. I hereby join myself to the Master, Yeshua the Messiah, the righteous one, the bread of life, and the true light, the source of eternal salvation for all of the hearing. Like a branch that remains in the vine, may we remain in him, just as he remains in the Father, and the Father in him. In order that they may remain in us. May the grace of the Master, Yeshua the Messiah, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abound to us. Amen. Amen. We're all here for Yeshua today. And there's a song that's kind of burning in my heart right now. And just, if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. Um, but just go ahead and enjoy it with me. It sounds like this Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai It goes on, but that's the part. Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai he is the reason we're here today, and we are gathered here today in his name. Amen. May we always be found in him and join ourselves to him and his teachings. Let's go to page 98. The angel of Mocha. Hebrew? Not Hebrew, I'm sorry. Uh, Grayson. You both start with G. Um, Grayson, come up here and help me uh, worship. Help me worship. Ain kamocha holy madohonai, but ain kamama say lecha, ma kutma kukola homim, umam shata kali kotohor vador, adonai melek, adonai malak, adonai yiglo play a laham by ek, adonai ohos, let omo ye take, adonai yvarek et omo vashalom. Aha raha kabi, eti gamer pentekaha, eti yon. Tine komot, yerushala hai, tine komot, yerushala hai. Hiva ta, leva ha ta ha ta, tu mele gam rom rom pedisa, adoho no lami. This one. There is none like you, Adonai, and there is nothing like your deeds. God, you rule eternally. Your kingdom lasts for all generations. Adonai rules, Adonai rule. Adonai will rule forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Merciful Father, favor Zion with your goodness. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. For we trust only you, ruler, God on high, sovereign of the world. Let's all rise for the opening of your own Kodesh. By the peace of be your Moshe. Kuma Adonai, by Futo Ebeka, by Nusu Mishneka Mibneka, Ki Mitsio Tete Tora, Ki Mitsio Tete Tora, Kutar Adonai, Mirishalai, Baruch Shenatan Tora Tora, Baruch Shenatan Tora Tora, La Al Yisrael. Whenever the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, Adonai, and scatter your enemies. May those that hate you flee from you. For Torah shall come from Zion, the 
the world of Adonai from Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in his holiness takes the Torah to Israel. Continue on page 101. Praise be the name of the sovereign of the universe. Praise be your crown and your place. May your love for your people Israel last forever. May the salvation of your right hand be revealed to your people in your holy house. Grant us the goodness of your line and accept our prayer with mercy. May it be your will that we be granted a long good life and may I be counted among the righteous so that you will have mercy on me and protect me in all that is mine and all that belongs to your people of Israel. For you are the one who nourishes all and sustains all. You rule over all. You are the one who rules over earthly rulers and sovereignty is yours. I am a servant of the blessed Holy One. I bow before God and before the honor of God's glory at all times. Not in any human do I trust or do I crown any angel, but in the God of heaven, who is the true God and whose glory is true, and whose prophets are true, and who multiplies deeds and goodness is true. In God do I trust, and in God's holy and honored name I speak praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to the and completely answer my heart's desires and those who are in Israel for good, for life, and for peace. Amen. Page 102. Shema Yisrael Adnai Eloheinu Adnai Echad. Shema Yisrael Adnai Eloheinu Adnai Echad. Eloheinu Kadol Adnai Kadol Shema. Echad Eloheinu Kadol Adnai God is great with me. Let us praise God together. Huh. 
I'll tell you what. Point to the one you want. We have. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that up there. And everyone, repeat after me. God's words are as sweet as honey. <laughs> go ahead and pick that up. And I'll say this in front of everyone. I believe very strongly that God has a special role for all of our children here, for Eli, for Grayson, and for little Michael Bean. And, um, oh gosh, Eleanor? Okay, I, I didn't want to mess up. I just I never talked to her. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, we believe it very sternly. And so, Robert, would you go ahead and bless um, the Taurus girl on page 104? returns from prayer and asks after the two boys, but Uriah puts him off until the close of Shabbat. 
Then she poses a question. Some time ago, I was given a treasure to guard, and now the owner wants it back. Must I return it? Of course, replies my ear, probably wondering what his wife is thinking. Then she leads him into the bedroom and shows him the bodies of their two sons. These are the treasures, and God has taken them back. And as we look this morning at the little ones in our midst, we are reminded of just how sad an occasion that must have been. But it takes a very deep measure of insight, godly insight, to be able to accept the things that come our way in life. This has been a terrible week for our country. Innocent lives have been shed in New York. Innocent lives have been shed in Texas shed by virtually innocent ones, 18 years old in both cases. Frightening. Chief among the lessons, says Rabbi Resnick of the story that I just shared is this. The things that we hold most precious in life really do not belong to us, but to God. We're only given guardianship for a while. If we cannot possess, totally possess, even these most precious things, we ultimately, he said, possess nothing at all. Dispossession implies loss or violation, but in God's design, it may draw us into boundless riches, as we may hope that they arrive and my heir discovered. The final chapters of Leviticus speak of possession and dispossession to reflect the big story of the Torah, that we're on our way from creation to completion. Each of us in our own lives, the same journey, though it may take us down different roads. In most years, he says, we read the final parashat of Leviticus, Bahar, the, yeah, Bahar and Bakhtarabai, Together is one week's portion and both take place in the same setting, at the foot of Sinai, spiritually, at the foot of Sinai. The horror opens and Adonai spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai. Bahukate and the entire book of Leviticus conclude, these are the commandments which Adonai commanded Moshe for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. There they received their final set of instructions before they departed to the land of promise. And I would be willing to bet that not one in the crowd imagined at that time as they set out that 38 more years of wandering in the wilderness lay ahead for them. Instead, instead, these instructions were to be the final orders before Israel entered its inheritance, which would happen after the 40 years of travel. And accordingly, he says, a writer says that Moshe, our teacher, mentions this chapter here in Leviticus 25 because he thought they would immediately enter the land as he testified, saying, we are journeying to the place. At the crucial moment that Israel thinks about taking possession of the promised land, it's even more striking to realize the inheritance will not really belong to them at all. The land remains the property of Hashem, and it remains to this day and forever the property of Hashem. By their laws, by his rules, that land would revert every 50 years from the original division decreed by Moshe to the first generation to enter the land. Thus, each share in the land of Israel is a holding rather than a possession on the part of the people. Every Yovel, every 50th year, the Israelites would proclaim freedom throughout the land for all its inhabitants, with each to return to his own holding, each to his own family. In the final 
RSCI, Leviticus introduces the principle of dispossession, which is a key to life in the age to come. Ownership implies the right to use one's property however one desires, including the right to sell it. But that was not the case for Israel. In Leviticus 25, verses 15 and 16, he said, In buying from your neighbor, you shall deduct only for the number of years since so well, since the Jubilee. And in selling to you, he shall charge you only for the remaining crop years. The more such years, the higher the price you pay. The fewer such years, the lower the price. For what he is actually selling you is not land for the number of harvest. And that principle of dispossession concludes the instructions here at the end of the living. All ties from the land, whether the seed from the ground or the fruit from the tree are Adonai. They are holy to Adonai. All ties of herd and flock, every tenth one that passes under the shepherd's staff shall be holy to Hashem. As Rabbi Hillel noted long ago, the more possessions, the more worry. I think that our society and in the world in general needs to think about that very deeply. The more possessions, the more you have, the more the worry at the thought of losing We live in an age of consumerism. We live in an age of pleasures, of people who place pleasures above obedience to the Almighty, above the walk to the Almighty. And you're gonna hear a lot of things said about this past week, as I mentioned before, from place to place. People are gonna come up with all kinds of ideas They'll speak of gun control. I happen to believe in the Second Amendment and I have reasons for that. And I recognize that each of you has an opportunity to decide for yourself. But the problem we have in this country is not a gun problem. It's not gun control, we're not gonna fix it. Soul control is the only chance this nation or this world has. Soul control. Possessions may sometimes be a gift from God, but they can stand between us and Him. Thus, Messiah's invitation to follow Him involves this possession. Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Remember the rich young ruler? The guy who had everything. He had the yachts, he had the penthouse, he had it all. But he knew something was missing in his life. And he came to Yeshua and asked, what must I do? And Yeshua gave him the commands that you're supposed to keep. And he said, I keep all of these, but I'm still not complete. And he said, if you want to be complete, sell everything you've got. Give that away and come and follow me. And like many in our society today, it says that he went away very sorrowful because he was unwilling to grant to God the desire that held him for the riches that were his and the things that wealth bought. His act. Yeshua's act of dispossession was made for us. He endured death as the obedient son of Adam so that all the disobedient children of Adam may endure life instead of death. His act, however, is also an example for us. As Rav Shaul notes, let the same mind be in you. And this challenge, let the same mind be in you that is in him. That is in him. Rabbi Resnick says that we might paraphrase Hillel 
and saying that the more stuff we possess, the more stuff possesses us. Liberation comes as we realize that life in this age is a holding and it's true for us all. Buried a first cousin yesterday. Fine young man to me, at any rate. He was only 72. But a fine, fine boy. But you know, whatever he worked for in those 72 years, as he lies in that box, the only hope that he has for any wealth of all, of any kind, is in the life of God. And praise God, he did know his Savior. And as I passed by his coffin for our final goodbye, I patted him on the arm and said, I'll see you on the other side, old boy. And I will. I look forward to that time. As we possess nothing in this world, he has taken possession of us. And we are a possession that he will not give away or let slip away or toss away. We're his forever by his grace through his love. A precious father, Abba in heaven, thank you for the day that is ours. Thank you for the hope that is ours in the dangerous world, Father, in which we live. Terrible things happen because mankind has separated itself from you and has separated itself from the principles that you placed before us. Help us, we pray, to not only cling to your word, not only cling to your commands, but to proclaim them before others, to conduct our lives in a way, Father, that would share Yeshua share his cross from this world. We thank you for the day. We thank you for Shabbat, for this opportunity of being together in this place in which we gather. I thank you this morning for every precious face that's before me and behind me in this place. And I pray for the guidance that you will have by today. May you guide your servant Quentin direct through him a message that we got to reach hearts that need it desperately and we all need the word desperately. Guide us, direct us, above all things, Father, use us. We pray humbly, trusting in your holy, righteous, and and truth. We shall be assured in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Page 106, and we have someone very special with us today. It's good to see you. We've been praying for Juanita now for many months. Um, things just take a while when you're done doing surgery. And it's so good to see you. Is anyone happy to see her here today? And so let's go to page 107. Juanita, would you please read to us those top few lines. This is a blessing recited by anyone who has recovered from a serious illness, returned safely from a long journey, or who has survived any kind of danger. Out loud. We have out. Yes. Praise are you, O God, O God, God, our God, the wonder of the universe, who actually kindly worked towards the unserving and dealt kindly with me. May the one who has bestowed goodness upon you continue to grant you every kind of goodness. Amen. Should we still include you on our list today? Should we include you on our list for prayers for healing today? Okay. So let's go over to page 108. This is the passage of scripture I usually read um, at this point in service. I'm going over to Matthew chapter 8. 
You see, we just descended from a kind of spiritual mountain. That's what Aliyah means, to go up. And it's like we have a little mountain here where we read the law. It's kind of like Mount Moses going up Mount Sinai, receiving the law, and reading to the children of Israel. We just went up the mountain. We are coming down from the mountain. And that's why I feel that this one is appropriate. After Yeshua had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Then a man afflicted with Sararat came, kneeled in front of him, and said, Sir, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Yeshua reached out his hand, touched him, and said, I am willing to be cleansed. At once he was cleansed from his Sararat, his leprosy. Then Yeshua said to him, See that you tell no one, but as a testimony to the people, go and let the Kohen examine you and offer the sacrifice that Moshe commanded. We know that Yeshua is able to do anything. We know that there is no disease he cannot heal. And we're so blessed to have Juanita with us today as an example that he is faithful. Sometimes it takes a while and you have to go the long way to healing. Sometimes it's not instantaneous, but we know that he can do all things and that we can start our services with blessing him for his goodness. His faithfulness in life. And you can say that we end our services with the Mordes Kaddish because God is still faithful to us in death. Page 108, also the first line. Page 109. May the Holy Blessed One who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rebka, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal Yonatan, Juanita, Teresa, Carol, Maria, and Gail Renee. If anyone else wants to lift up a name now, you may. Max. Max. Amelia. Amelia. Lord, give them healing. May the Holy One give him support, give him support, courage, determination, and patience of spirit. Grant Yonatan, Juanita, Teresa, Carol, Maria, Gail Renee, and Maximilian physical and spiritual wholeness. May God in kindness strengthen and heal them speedily, body and soul, together with others who are ill. And let's say Amen. Amen. O oh God, heal them speedily. Amen. Let's go to page 110. Hear their voice of God when they call. Be gracious to them and answer them. In your hands is the soul of all living things. We turn to you now to give aid to those in distress. Grant them patience, faith, and courage, never let despair overwhelm them. Be with them in difficult times. Help them to face their anxieties with confidence and hope. Give them with your healing power so that in vigor of body and mind they may return to their loved ones for a life of blessing and sustenance. Restore them to health, O oh God, and give them strength. Pray for you, O God, of the sick. Page 112. Yikada, Vikada, Shemeh, Baba, Baba, Dibarak, your tape, Yom Kippur, Kuteh, Asaha, Yakon of Yom, Amakon, Ukaye, Deko, Be Israel, Bahagala, Bahagala, Uis Makari, Bimru, Amen, Amen, Yahay, Shmeh, Rabba, Mibarak, Balma, Maya, Maya, Yibarak, Yibarak, Mishbak, Mibarak, your mom, Vita, Seva, Yita, Dar, Vita, Let. Let's you uh, hold the torch here. Mm -hmm. ah. The Zeta Torah, Asher Moshe, Lignay Benay in Israel, all the Adonai, the Yad Moshe. So the Torah that Moshe set before this right and that's God's word. And while we are dressed in Torah scroll, Nick will lead us in the Haftarah. It's a tree of life for those who hold on to it, and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant, and all its ways are peaceful. 
Praise are you, Adonai, God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise are you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses your servant, and Israel your people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Or after all comes from Jeremiah 16. Start in chapter 16, verse 19. <clears throat> I deny my strength, my fortress, my refuge in time of troubles. The nations will come to you from the ends of the earth, saying, Our ancestors, ancestors inherited nothing but lies, futile idols, completely useless. Can a person make himself gods? In fact, they aren't gods at all. Therefore, I will make them know, once and for all, I will make them know my power and my mind. Then they will know that my name is Adonai. Yehuda's sin is written with an iron pen. With a diamond point, it is engraved on the tablet of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. As they remember their children, so they remember their altars, and their sacred poles by the green trees on high hills. My mountain in the field, your wealth and all your treasures will be plundered because of the sin of your high places throughout your territory. You will relinquish your hold on your heritage, which I gave you. I will make you serve your enemies in the land you do not know. For you have kindled my fiery anger, and it will burn forever. Here is what Adonai says. A curse on the person who trusts in humans, who relies on merely human strength, whose heart turns away from Adonai. He will be like a tamarisk in the Arabah. When relief comes, it is unaffected. For it lives in the sun-baked desert, in salty, uninhabited land. Blessed is the man who trusts in Adonai. Adonai will be his security. He will be planted like a tree planted near water. It spreads out its roots by the river. It does not notice when heat comes, and its foliage is unluxuriant. It is not anxious in a year of drought, but keeps on yielding fruit. The heart is more deceitful than anything else, and mortally sick. Who can fathom it? I, Adonai, search the heart. I test inner motivations in order to give to everyone what his actions and conduct deserve. A partridge hatches eggs it did not lay. Like this are those who get rich unjustly. In the prime of life, their wealth will desert them. In the end, they will prove to be fools. Throne of glory, exalted from the beginning, our holy sanctuary. Hope of Israel, Adonai. All who abandon you will be ashamed. Those who leave you will be inscribed in the dust, because they have abandoned Adonai, the source of living water. Heal me, Adonai, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are my praise. Praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, rock of the world, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it and it is done, who speaks and it is fulfilled. We now have Robert read from the New Testament. The reading this morning from Berit HaVishah comes again from Mighty Yehu, book of Matthew, reading from the 16th chapter this morning, and I'm reading verses 20 through 28. For those who'd like to follow along, that is Matthew 16, and beginning at verse 20. Then he warned the Talmudim not to tell anyone that he was the Mashiach. From that time on, Yeshua began making it clear to his Talmudim that he had to go to Jerusalem and endure much suffering at the hands of the elders, the head Kohanim, and the Torah teachers, and that he had to be put to death. But on the third day, he had to be raised to life. Kepha took him aside and began rebuking him. Heaven be merciful. Lord, by no means will this happen to you. But Yeshua turned his back on Kepha, saying, Get behind me, Shaitan. You are an obstacle in my path, because your thinking is from a human perspective and not from God's perspective. Then Yeshua told his Talmudim, If anyone wants to come after me, let him say no to himself take up his cross, his execution state, and keep following me. 
For whoever wants to save his own life will destroy it. But whoever destroys his life for my sake will find it. What good will it do if someone, if he gains the whole world but forfeits his life? Or what can a person give in exchange for his life? So, for the Son of Man will come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he'll repay everyone according to his conduct. Yes, I tell you that there are some people standing here who will not experience death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. For all God's words are truth and righteousness. You are faithful, I deny our God. And your words are trustworthy. Not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled. For you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praised are you, Adonai the God, who is dependable in all your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's sake. Save the humble soul quickly in our day. Praised are you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai our God, with Elijah the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your anointed. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you bowed to him by your holy name, that his light would never be extinguished. Praised are you, Adonai, shield of David. For your Torah and for the worship, for the prophets and for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai our God, for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor. For all of these, Adonai our God, we thank you and we praise you. May your name be praised perpetually forever. Praised are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Continue on page 121. Twenty one is a prayer for our country, and we certainly realize that our country stands in great need of prayer. Not just in Buffalo, New York, not just in Texas, but across every inch of this nation. Prayer is needed to deal with the evil that is surrounding and overtaking. Would you share with me, join with me? as we pray on 121 this prayer for our country our god and god of our ancestors please accept with mercy our prayer for our land and its government teach our leaders the values of your Torah. help them understand your rules of righteousness so that our land may never lack peace and tranquility prosperity and freedom i deny god of the spirits of all flesh Send your spirit to all the inhabitants of our land and plant love and brotherhood, peace and friendship among all the nationalities and things who dwell in it. Uproot from their hearts any hatred or enmity, jealousy or rivalry. Fulfill the yearnings of your children who delight in its honor and who desire to see it be a light for all the nations. May it be your will that our land will be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world and that friendship and freedom will reign between them, and that the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. And on page 123, prayer for the state of Israel. Israel has never known true and genuine peace from the 14th day of May, 1948 and before. It continues to be a struggle uh, the nations of the world continue to criticize, to beat down the Jewish people. Anti-Semitism is on the grow everywhere you look. They're even the part of the leadership of our own nation. They are asking Israel to do things that she should not do. Israel should claim what is hers. And those who would have her divide the land need to read the book of Job. So there's a place where God's going to take those to the shed, to the woodshed, when he judges those who have divided his land. Will you share with me in a prayer for the state of Israel? Our heavenly parent, rock of Israel and his redeemer, bless the state of Israel for its flowering of our redemption. Shield it under your loving wing and spread over it your sukkah of peace. Send your light and truth to his leaders, ministers, and advisors, and guide them rightly with your good advice. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land. 
and lead them, God, to deliverance. Crown their efforts with victory, grant peace to the land, and eternal happiness to its inhabitants, and let us say, Amen. Page 125. May it be your will, O our God, and our ancestors, to renew this month for us for good and for blessing. Grant us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of good livelihood, a life of physical strength, a life in which we will have reverence for God and revulsion for sin, a life in which we are free of shame and reproach, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we will have the love of Torah and the love of God, a life in which our working heart's desires will be fulfilled. Amen. Salah. May the one who worked miracles for our ancestors and redeemed them from slavery to freedom soon redeem us and gather our exiles from the four corners of the earth. All these are our friends. Let us say amen. amen. The new month of Sivan will begin um, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, may it bring goodness for us and for all the people in Israel. Amen. Go ahead and uh, go ahead. Uh, actually, we'll just keep going. May the Blessed Holy One renew it for us and for all God's people, for the house of Israel, for life and peace. Amen. For joy and gladness. Amen. For redemption and consolation. And let us say, Amen. 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 All right, page 128. We'll go down to that bottom paragraph. Hallelujah, <laughs> Page 
going to be seated. When the ark rested, Moses would say, Return on night to the millions of Israel, rise up on night to your resting place, the temple, you and the ark of your strength. We are priests, people both in righteousness, and the faithful sing with joy. But the same of you, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. I have given you good teaching, do not leave my Torah. There's a tree of life for those who hold on to it, those who are happy. It's fast or pleasant, and all its ways are peaceful. Return to us on night, we shall return from your days as in days of old. It's Kaimi, it's Kaimi, it's Kaimi, it's Kaimi, it's Kaimi, 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 you know, the scripture says that the Lord will bless his people with strength, the Lord will bless his people with peace. And I'll say this it is a very tumultuous world out there today. I feel like there is officially no place that is deemed safe because there has been so much violence everywhere. And yet we can know that in the midst of it, God has promised his own people peace. And so even though it's a very frightening world out there, let me remind you that Yeshua is still in peace. Let's go on over to the next slide. Uh, we will see the last verse of the book of Romans. And we'll go ahead and go into our time for announcements. To the only wise God, to the only wise God, three Shua, the Messiah, three Shua, the Messiah. Be the glory forever, be the glory forever, be the glory forever, forever. Amen. Thank you everyone for helping up here today. So my first thing on here was to welcome back to Juanita, but quite not already hitting yeah. on now. So she's walking very well, did you notice? Yeah. Hi, I agree. It's good to see you. Good to be back. And um, you were gone a long time, so it's good. But we also have Linda back, and most people don't realize she also had surgery, different type of surgery, and she was back kind of quicker. So we're happy to see you back, too. We don't want to leave you out because you recovered so fast. You know, two different surgeries, no comparison here. That was a major one there. But um, so I just wanted to highlight that. And um, the arm, did everyone notice the arm? Up here, in the whole Whoa. It no longer looks like a TV entertainment center. And that is Pauline, and I know she's watching on the internet right now. <laughs> so. Um, she finished it and she has just a little bit more to do, but it officially is about complete. So I think she did a fantastic job with that. Quentin did a lot with it and Eric did some, it was kind of, but it was really Pauline who oversaw the whole thing. That was amazing. We have um, Tor, Tor Club, of course, on Tuesday with the women at 10 o'clock and on Wednesday at Quentin's house and Inessa's at 5.15. But we're coming to the end, and I did my Torah lesson already for the upcoming week, and it's get, we're getting close to the cross. It's been a two-year cycle, Jesus my rabbi, and we know we're coming to an end here. And we'll be starting a new grouping of it, a brand new topic. It's going to be on wisdom. It's going to be following the Torah cycle, and it's coming this fall. And First Fruit Design, has, they're doing something new that they've never done before, and they are... Um, they know Tour Club is meant to be studied together in groups, face to face, but they said this is not the world we live in right now, and they are doing something brand new, and it's where you'll hold a group on the internet. It's a different type of group. If you are interested in this, let me know, and First Street Design right now, you have to interview with them and do different things. They want to make sure we're all on the same page. And we have one group already starting out of this congregation who's going to be, I think, in there are people in Texas and all over. And so if you're interested, this is where family groups, and if I'd like my daughter in Wisconsin to be part of a tour group, but um, there is one near her house, but it's closed. It's too full, and so they never accepted anyone for the last two years. This way, people 
that can't get in groups all over the United States can get into them. If you feel led to do this, I am not. I am not a computer person. I didn't even turn on my cell phone today, I don't think. I, I'm, yeah, if you think Quentin, he is like so good compared to me. <laughs> and he doesn't like computers, I like him even less. So this is not geared toward me, but there's other people who are very savvy on technical stuff and they like to do these meetings. And so First Fruit Zion has a whole new thing. So you can either talk to me about it, talk to Quentin about it, or go to First Fruit Zion and talk to them about it. So that's something kind of new. We have Shed Vote, which is Pentecost, and we're celebrating that today. And, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I got all the food this week. Oh, it is next week. I am so off. Well, we have lots of food in the back, okay? So I don't know why you're bringing so many burgers. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. You know what? This has just been a week for me. I get those weeks, too. All right. Well, I brought a bunch of burgers. I'll put them in the freezer, whatever's left over, so everyone feel free to eat them. <laughs> That's kind of, I'm so sorry. I guess I'm off a week. Well, I'll just tell you about the burgers. I at first thought I was going to do hot dogs, but then I thought, it's a dairy holiday. Why would I do hot dogs? It doesn't make sense. So I bought these burgers, and actually the congregation bought the burgers. And they are gluten-free, soy-free, non-GMO vegetable. And I searched, I found some, we grilled them all, we put them in buns, and they're in the back. You can have some today, and whatever doesn't work, bring them in the freezer, we're going to bring them out next week. I'm sorry, I am just like off a week. <laughs> that happens. Um, we are starting groups. Groups are coming, and we have one Friday night group beginning in a couple weeks. And we, I, I believe it's already full. If you are interested in hosting a group at your house, um, let me know. Or if you're interested in participating in a group, say like my house isn't big enough, or you know I live with other people, I want to go to one. Let me know, and so it can be um, whatever the host wants. It can be any night of the week. Ours is going to be on Friday night, but just we're going to try. I know some people want to be part of it, and so we need people who are willing to host them right now. But if you want to be a participant, let me know that too. This Wednesday is June 1st, correct? Yes. And we have um, one of the groups that we're starting is called the Crafty Group. And oh, here's a change. It was going to be meeting here at the church. It's been, we're switched it to my house. And so the Crafty Group is always going to be at my house. And we are making these trays. And also we are making these little plant to ter terrariums, so they're kind of cute. That's what I think it looks easier. But the whole kit is included and there's a cost involved. I think it's $8 for the one and 15 for the other. If you want to come, let me know today. Um, I have to know by today because the cost of the kits to put everything together. And then we're gonna, it doesn't meet every month, it meets every other month. So this Wednesday is gonna be the crafting group at my house and I live across the street from the hospital, Tanova. At exit four, kind of that area, so that's where I live. And after service, I am going to be going around to everyone asking you to make sure I have the correct phone number and address and email for every single person so we can connect a little bit better. All right, let's go on over. To the book of Vayikra, the book of Leviticus, chapter 26. Father, thank you for your word. I pray that we are responsible explicators and readers and teachers and studiers of your word. Help us remember that study is indeed a form of worship, but it's a form of worship that no one sees. It is one that is entirely behind closed doors very often, but you see it. Help us be responsible in the way we study and teach you. Teach you. If you will live by my regulations, observe my mitzvot, and obey them, then I will provide the rain you need in its season. The land will yield its produce, and the trees in the field will yield their fruit. Your threshing time will extend until the grape harvest, and your grape harvest will extend until the time for sowing seed. You will eat as much food as you want and live securely in your land. Wow, we're off to a great start. This is such a good, this is going to be a pleasant section, right? Look at the next section. 
I will give shalom in the land. You will lie down to sleep unafraid of anyone. I will rid the land of wild animals. The sword will not go through your land. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall before your sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. Your enemies will fall before your sword. Now, just for some context, the first one is a one to twenty ratio. The next is a one to one hundred ratio. Understand that while it's good to be, it's you can, it's good to be a righteous person, and God sees the lone righteous person. The congregation has a certain power that is not met in individual study in life. And that's why it's so important to be part of a body. I will turn toward you and make you productive, increasing your numbers and upholding my covenant with you. You will eat all you want from last year's harvest and throw out what remains of the old to make room for the new. I will put my tabernacle among you and I will not reject you, but I will walk among you and be your God, you will be my people, and I am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you will not be their slaves. I have broken the bars of your yoke so that you can walk upright. Something that I feel is that recently I've been preaching a lot, not teaching so much, but preaching, and I've been preaching big concepts. And something I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start teaching more particulars now of the Torah, especially pertaining to the mitzvot and the individual commandments. But, and I'm just letting you know that, and that God very much loves his word. And so it doesn't matter how obscure something can be, it's good and it's worth observing and teaching and discussing. Now, you might think that this is a section of just blessing, but then there's a twist. But if you will not listen to me and obey all these mitzvot, if you loathe my regulations and reject my rulings in order to not obey all my mitzvot but cancel my covenant, then I, I, for my part, will do this to you. I will bring terror upon you. And what we're going to find in the rest of this chapter is describing the punishments getting worse and worse and worse and worse. To give you some idea, first there will be sickness, then drought and destruction of the temple, wild beasts, Siege, starvation, desolation. And this is where God's wrath kicks into high gear. And then exile. We see that at first he just says, I'll punish you, I'll punish you. And then he starts saying how he'll work against them. And then it's work against them in his wrath. This is important. I was, I was talking to Yonatan just yesterday. He was here. Um, he had to come down. And he defined a hellfire brimstone preacher as one who just doesn't have any of the fluff. They get down to business. Sometimes I've been accused of being kind of hellfire brimstone. But it's serious. Because the goodness of God is worth celebrating. But the wrath of God is also worth recognizing, observing, and living in reverent fear. And there is a, what I feel, a parallel passage to this and Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 24. Let's go there now. And this is often seen as the trajectory for a wayward nation. So what Paul is doing here is he is talking about the Gentile world. Israel rejected prophets in the past, but the Gentile world rejected philosophers. And God gave philosophers to the Gentile world who were just so clear. They were so intelligent. And that the Gentile world had traded over the great philosophers for nothingness. And Paul says, where's the great philosopher of this age? They're gone. And in verse 24, he starts talking about God's relationship with a wayward Gentile nation. This is why God has given them up, them, plural, to vileness of the heart's lust to the shameful misuse of each other's bodies. That's the first layer. They have exchanged the truth of God for falsehood by worshiping and serving created things rather than the creator. Praise be he forevermore. In context, this is talking about idolatry, but it's the working of hands. And I think that it's interesting to me that the two nations that put flags on the moon, one is still there and the other is us. We reached our climax, so to speak, in a scientific revolution. But what came shortly after was the sexual revolution. 
This is why God has given them up to degrade passions, so that women exchange natural sexual relations for a natural, and likewise, the men giving up natural relations with the opposite sex burn with passion for one another, men committing shameful acts with one another, receiving in their own persons the penalty of appropriate to their perversion. So right after the sexual revolution, we have what we're seeing now. In other words, since they have not considered God's or, uh, God worth knowing, God has given them up to worthless ways of thinking, so that they do improper things. They are filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, vice, stuffed with jealousy, murder, quarreling, dishonesty, and ill will. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God. They are insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They plan evil schemes. They disobey parents. They are brainless, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. This is called the debased mind. They know, I'm sorry, they know well enough that God's righteous decree that people who do such things deserve to die, yet not only do they keep doing them, but they applaud the others who do the same. You see, there are two parallel passages here. The Gentile nations are handed over to a heart's lust, degrading passions, and worthless ways of thinking. Well, first they worship the things made by their hands. So idolatry leads to perversion, leads to even worse perversion, and then a debased mind. Four layers of wrath. I hear people say things like, if we allow homosexuality to increase, then God's wrath will be poured out in this country like Sodom and Gomorrah. I encourage you to reread the section. It doesn't say that. Homosexuality is the punishment. Because you're being handed further and further over. Oh, that's not bad enough? Here's, a, here's an even worse one. Why is it, let me pose a question to us though. Why is it that Israel has seven layers of punishment but the Gentile nations have four. What is the difference? The difference is this. It is the emphasis and the end result. You see, see beloved, the thing is, with these nations, God has no covenant and he has no promise of redemption. But look now at Leviticus 26. Sickness, drought, and destruction, wild beasts, siege, starvation, desolation, exile. But what? where does it end? Verse 39. Those of you who remain will pine away in the lands of your enemies from guilt over your misdeeds and those of your ancestors. Then they will confess their misdeeds and those of their ancestors which they committed against me in their rebellion. They will admit that they went against me. At that time, I will be going against them, bringing them into the land of their enemies. But if their uncircumcised hearts will grow humble, and they are paid the punishment for their misdeeds, then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, also my covenant with Isaac, and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. Remember the land. The land. Say that. The land. For the land will lie abandoned without them, and it will be paid its Shabbat. While it lies desolate without them, and they will be paid the punishment for their misdeeds, because they reject my rulings and loathe my regulations. Yet in spite of all that, I will not reject them when they are in the land of their enemies, nor will I loathe them to the point of utterly destroying them, and thus break my covenant with them, because I am not denied their God. Rather, for their sake, I will remember my covenants of their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, with the nations watching, so that I might be their God, I am not denied. These are the laws, rulings, and teachings that Adonai himself gave to the people of Israel on Mount Sinai through Moshe. Sounds like a lot like the Sarchat Torah. And so, my my answer to you is those covenants had those nations had no covenant with God, but Israel did, and that's why Israel can rely on worse punishments at times, but also the promise of redemption. Scripture says this, Do not lose heart at the Lord's rebuke, and do not make light of his punishment. We often find that his rebuke comes, and if we don't take it seriously, then comes the punishment. And if you fear God, don't lose hope and despair at the rebuke. But, but, if you don't fear God, you will probably be pushed through into punishment territory, and you're told not to make light of it. Because when he punishes, he is serious. 
And so I have another question for us, and this is a question I did some reading into, and I couldn't seem to find an answer. So I'm going to give you my answer. You see, this portion today is divided into two. First, we're talking about the blessings and consequences of keeping the covenant. Good. This seems like a good way to end the book, right? But look at the next verse. And I said to Moshe, tell the people of Israel, if someone makes a clearly defined, defined vow to Adonai to give him the amount equal to the value of a human being. Now wait a minute, what's he talking about? Vows and gifts to the temple. By the way, these laws no longer pertain to us today because there is no sanctuary. When the sanctuary is built, then suddenly we're going to find that these laws are back in effect. In fact, they were in effect after the destruction of the temple, and they kind of ruled it out and said, this is, this is too difficult. Let's just wait till the sanctuary is built. And so we can see that if someone wants to give themselves to the temple, um, basically it's okay, you value them. If they fall between certain age brackets, then pay the value market for a slave. Okay, pay this much, pay this much. Males age 20 to 60 are naturally worth more than men 60 and up or children. That's how it works. It's just, what are you capable of doing? And then they talk about animals consecrated. What if you're kosher? What if you're not kosher? You know, what if, uh, what's his name, um, Jephthah? Uh, who's the man who sacrificed his daughter? Or offered her, consecrated her. I, I always lose track, but he, if his dog had run out to him after the battle, he couldn't sacrifice that at the temple. So he would have to get the value of the dog and give it. And there are those who say that he actually consecrated his daughter. And so understand that these are very practical laws pertaining to the temple. Now, this is my question to you, and I want us to think about this as we read the Torah. Because this is the note that Vayikra ends on. Why on earth end on this note about vows and the price of a vow plus one fifth, or what happens if you? Uh, donate a house, what happens if you donate land, when can it be bought back, etc., etc. Why on earth would we end on this note and not the note that says, this is what happens if you obey, this is, this is what happens if you disobey? I think it would seem a lot stronger to end on chapter 26 than 27. And there are different answers that you might propose, like for example, this is a composite text, that's more of a liberal answer, or maybe it's because ritual and moral law are intrinsic in the book of Leviticus. Or maybe it's because um, it was one numbers with uh, one document with numbers and then it was cut in half. Let me give you my answer. My answer is because after redemption, it's almost like life returns back to normal. Commands, commands, commands. If you do it, good. If not, it's what happens. But if you repent, you'll be redeemed. Then back to commands, commands, commands. That's how I understand this. It is showing that the full cycle of Torah living can be returned to. And these laws that require a temple, they'll be returned to their land, and a temple will be built, and everything will be restored. But the key word is repentance. The key word is repentance. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 29. You see, we have a call to be people who walk in repentance. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Bear fruit is the good things that you are doing, but repentance is tending over the bad to God. We are called to be a repentant people. Verse 29. What's going on here is it is Shavuot. And Kepha, Peter, is talking to a crowd that is gathered around the house at the coming of the Holy Spirit. He says, Brothers, I know I can say to you frankly that the patriarch David died and was buried. His tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him the, uh, that one of his descendants would sit on his throne, he was speaking in advance about the resurrection of Mashiach, that it was he who was not uh, abandoned in Sheol, and whose flesh did not see decay. God raised up this Yeshua, and we are witnesses of it. Moreover, he has been exalted to the right hand of God, has received from the Father what he promised, namely the Ruach HaKodesh, and has poured out this gift, 
what you are both seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he says, And I said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel know beyond doubt that God has made him both Lord and Mashiach. This Yeshua, whom you executed on a cross, on a stake. On hearing this, they were stung in the hearts, and they said to Kepha and the other apostles, the emissaries, Brothers, what should we do? Kepha answered them, Turn from sin. Return to God. And each of you be immersed on the authority of Yeshua the Mashiach into the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for those far away, as many as Adonai our God may call. We will probably return to this passage next week because that is Shavuot. And it's appropriate that we have that in mind for Shavuot because it's so easy to talk about Shavuot as the day we receive the law or maybe to talk about Ruth or maybe to talk about coming to the Holy Spirit, the Ark of Kadesh. But what if I propose to you that another huge component of Shavuot, as revealed here, is repentance? The people of Israel left Egypt and stood at Mount Sinai before their God. Likewise, we are to leave these horrible things and return to God in repentance. That is the theme between Leviticus 26 and 27. That is the connecting thread. That is why, because Israel was given repentance and those other nations were not. Repentance is an absolute must. Notice this language. Turn from sin, return to God, and each of you be immersed on the authority of Yeshua. What does that, what is that word return? What is that in Hebrew? Teshuvah. It's repentance. What is that last line we see from the Eskayinhi? Return to us and we will return to you. We can't return to him without repentance. We will make Teshuvah. And then renew our days as in days of old, which is exactly what Kiva promises. Times of refreshing and come. Guys, without repentance, no one will see the Lord. Are we walking in repentance? Not that we repent when we said a sinner's prayer and decided that we would accept Jesus into our heart, but have we continued in it? It was good of Israel to serve God at Mount Sinai, but it had to continue. And God told them the means of returning. It's abandon your sins and come to God. I used to teach, and this is how I understand it now. It would be easy for me to say, stop sinning. And what are we turning to when we do Teshuvah? We are turning to good deeds, right? But that creates a false dilemma. The opposite of sin is not good deeds. It's close. The opposite of sin is God. We abandon our lifestyle and we say we're going to grow closer to God in this aspect of our life, which results in, someone say it, good deeds in a fruitful life. And this brings me back to the, that other thing I mentioned earlier. Why is ritual law intrinsically connected with moral law in the Torah? They're not separable. The reason is because um, God gave it to them together. And that if they were joined close to God, it was going to result in more ritual law for them and more moral law. Together. Going toward God will result in a life of fruitfulness. But we must be in a place of repentance. When we read scripture, I encourage us to ask questions like we've been asking today. Why are these two concepts connected? Why end here? What does it say? God has promised redemption and restoration to himself in exchange for repentance. Do you want to know how extreme it is? 
Let's go back to what we read earlier in chapter 26. I'm going to start in verse 11. I will put my tabernacle among you, so I will rebuild the sanctuary, and I will not reject you. But I will walk among you and be your God, and you will be my people. Walk among you? What does that sound like? It sounds like the return to Eden. The return to Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden, where God walked with Adam and Chava in the cool of the day. It will be a return to perfection and Edenic state. It will be like sin never happened. I've got good news for you. That if you've fallen into sin, or if sin has messed you up, and you think it's too far gone, repent, and God will make it better than it once was. What do I mean by this? I don't mean that he'll take away pain. I don't mean that he'll take away suffering. I, I can't promise you physical healing. I can't promise you even emotional healing. But I will say this. That the glory will be restored to your life in a way that you could never imagine your life without it. The fall is going to increase the height in you. And God's going to make things better than when they began. With God, very often, our worst mess-ups can be redeemed into our most glorious moments. Can be. Not always. People will come up to me with stories, and I'll say, you know what? You might have to carry that one until you die. But I've seen it time and time again, God's faithfulness. Someone returns to God, and God returns to them in full force. I can't promise you much, but I can promise you that he is faithful, and he will. If you turn to him in repentance, he will run to you. How did I become a Messianic teacher here? Well, I tell people, in 2012, I had to lose my anointing. And in 2017, after one heck of an awful year, he gave it back to me. It's a long story. If, you're, if you haven't been here for a while, if you've been here for a while, I'm not going to repeat it again. But I will say this. Can't imagine my story without 2012. I can't imagine it without 2017. Would I have been happier without those years? Yes. But I couldn't imagine it without. Very many, very often when we walk with the Lord, we're going to say, this chapter was awful, but man did the Lord redeem it. I believe that the children of Israel are going to look back in the past and say, we can't believe what we had to go through in 70 AD and all the time since then and all the persecutions and all the slaughters. But my word, when they were, when we're sitting in Israel and Jerusalem and Yeshua HaMashiach is walking among us like he promised and we are literally living in a perfect world. We're going to say we can't imagine our lives without it now. God took the worst day possible, Good Friday, and made it the best day possible. God took the worst possible thing, like the Exodus, or like enslavement in Egypt, and made it the best possible thing in the Passover. God wants you to return to him. He wants you to leave your sins behind and walk with him. As he said, I am Adonai your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. I have broken the bars of the yoke so that you can walk upright. God wants you to be free of sin. So many people will stand up here and promise you physical blessings and prosperity. I'll tell you this. God wants you to know him. God wants you to be free of sin. God wants victory in your life over the flesh. God died. He sent his own son to die for you so that you could have it. And that is your inheritance, but we must walk in it. All sorts of interesting things going on here with the words. Like, why does it say that the fruits of the field will be fruitful? Well, the kind of the rabbinic explanation is that even trees that couldn't produce fruit because they were just a pine tree or whatever, suddenly will be able to produce fruit. And there's myth and legends. A woman will conceive and give birth in the same day. In other words, the, the, the result of the fall will be undone. 
And scripture says that wheat will grow seven times faster or seven times stronger. It's going to be perfect when this happens, but it is all reliant, as Kifa said, on Shavuot, on the people of Israel recognizing Yeshua HaMashiach and returning to God in repentance. And that day will come, and I believe it's very soon. Let, look around you. This is the beginning of it. This is the beginning of the return of our Mashiach. But, I say this to you right now, in the present, God has put it on our plates. Will you come to him in repentance, or will you choose your life of sin? I beg you, choose life. Choose repentance. Don't have a works mentality and say, I'm going to stop sinning and I'm going to force myself to be good. It will never work. Turn to God, go back to him, and say, please have this. Why am I so serious some days? Because this one is just so serious. God loves you. God wants you to be close to him. He did all the heavy lifting, literally, at the cross. It's all here for you, but you still have to be the one who says, I'm going to take you up on your gracious, gracious offer. And then many times of refreshing come. It's up to us. Just as it's up to Israel to repent while next time. Do I have anything? Does anyone want to add anything before I close out today? If we're walking with the Messiah, the truth is we're probably repenting of something. If we're walking with Him, walking with God, we're going to be finding imperfections in our own lives. And just understand, it's a process, it's a constant process, but it's a good one. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for everything you have done for us on the cross. Before then and since then, you are so faithful to us. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's go to page 162. Ain't hello, hey, you ain't a do, hey, you ain't a moshi, hey, you be hello, hey, you be a do, hey, you be a do, hey, you be a hey, you no de la no de la no de la no de la moshi, hey, you Baruch hello, hey, you. Baruch Adonai nu, Baruch Malkei nu, Baruch Moshiach nu, Atahu Elohei nu, Atahu Adonai nu, Atahu Machei nu, Atahu Shiach nu, Atahu Shektiru, Avotei nu, Levaneka Etzrasami. There's none like our God. There's none like our Sovereign. There's none like our Ruler. There's none like our Deliverer. Who is like our God? Who's like our Sovereign? Who's like our Ruler? Who's like our Deliverer? Let's thank our God, let's thank our sovereign, let's thank our ruler, let's thank our deliverer. Blessed is our God, blessed is our sovereign, blessed is our ruler, blessed is our deliverer. You are our God, you are our sovereign, you are our ruler, you are our deliverer. You are the one to whom our ancestors offered the incense offering. I know how transitioning from talking about God in the third person to talking about God in the second person. It's like we've drawn near. Let's go to page 166 at the useful note. <clears throat> Somewhere in the last year, in the last 11 months, we're coming up on a one year anniversary. Oh, yes. What's the name? The name is Alfred Fisher. Alfred. All right. Anyone else? Okay, Robert, would you like to lead us in this or would you like to just say it together? 
but he better. <laughs> Raise your hand. Uh, <clears throat> we lost a niece by the name of Carrie. Carrie. Alfred and Carrie. All right, go ahead and stand up. And if you want to stand in solidarity, you may. Amen. That's the left. Oh, say shalom to Ramah. That's right. Who you say shalom only you? That's right. Thank all Israel, Hebrew. Amen. Let's read those last two stanzas together. May there be abundant peace from heaven and light for us and for all Israel. And let's say amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens make peace for us and for all Israel. And let's say amen. Go out in the grace and peace of our Master Yeshua the Messiah. Go out in repentance too. You are dismissed and enjoy this wonderful week with him. You are dismissed. Thank you.